In this video, I'm going to go over eight basic shapes that are frequently seen in calculus. I'm going to start by writing each function underneath the graph, which we'll do right after that. So the first one is the absolute value function, which is y equals absolute value of x. The second one is a quadratic function, y equals x squared. The third one is a, cube, a cubic function, y equals x cubed. The fourth one we're going to look at is the cube root function, which is y equals the cube root of x. The fifth one is just the square root function, y equals square root x. Um, the next one is just your basic rational function, y equals 1 over x. And the next one is the rational function squared, or 1 over x squared. And the last one you probably have not seen before, it's y equals the absolute value of x over x. And this particular graph comes up a few times in calculus, so we present it here. Now let's go back and look at the graphs. The absolute value graph has a shape that looks like a v. So I'm going to just sketch something that looks like a v. There's your absolute value graph. You should have studied that in both Algebra 2 and Pre-Calculus. Most of those courses cover that. The parabola looks like a, a U. Um, the cubic we sometimes nickname a wiggle for obvious reasons. Its graph looks like half a parabola opening up to the right and half a parabola opening down to the left. So it looks like a line that has a little bit of a wiggle to it. The cube root graph looks like what we call a swiggle, the S standing for sideways. So it looks like a wiggle that's been turned on its side. So it kind of opens out to the right and then down and out to the left. So that's why we call it a swiggle, a sideways wiggle. The square root function we nickname a wing because it looks like the wing of a bird, like that. Maybe when you were younger you used to draw pictures at the beach of like seagulls and you did this. And a wing is just one side of that. So that's your wing right there. Um, rational function, your basic rational function looks like opposing boomerangs. That's how we sort of classify it at my school. And there's asymptotes on both of the axes, which I'll denote with these marks. And here's one of the boomerangs like that. And then if we oppose that in the other quadrant, quadrant three, we end up getting this. So we call that opposing boomerangs. Rational function squared, again, has the asymptotes on the axes, like so. And we nickname it a praying mantis, which is that insect whose little arms look like they're praying. So you have to have a little bit of an imagination, but that makes these a little bit more memorable if you uh, have a nickname for them. These arrowheads aren't essential, but I felt like I left it off, so I needed to be thorough. Now this final one is Jesse's giant step. This one's interesting. We have the absolute value of x over x. And whenever we have x over itself, or anything over itself, it ends up being 1. However, there are certain cases where if x is negative, you're going to get negative 1. So the graph ends up looking like this. Here's positive 1. In some cases, anything over itself is 1. But in other cases, if the x that you select is negative, then the ratio is going to be negative 1. So what you have here is, a, is basically a staircase with one giant step, so Jesse's giant step. At this time, try to complete the worksheet associated with clip 1.